Hello and welcome to this episode of the Diary of a Lawyer and this discussion is about Kenya's uh, suggestion suggestion of um, voluntary self-election to engage in a peacekeeping mission in Haiti uh, which is just off the coast of the United States somewhere in the Caribbean. As you know Haiti has been undergoing a series of internal turmoil for years including natural disasters, earthquakes and so on and so on and so forth. And consequently, the there has and as we saw, I think in 2021 or so, where the president's uh, residence, official residence, was attacked, and he was killed, and his wife um, injured and escaped to the United States for treatment. And since then, the country has been gripped with lawlessness, with gangs in the control of one part of Haiti, its capital after another, and the country's fragile government issued a plea nearly 12 months ago for foreign troops to step in and assert order in the crisis-wracked Caribbean nation. And after that desperate appeal, a force led by Kenya finally seems to seems close to materializing what would be the first time uh, an African country leads such a mission in one of the America's most unstable places. Um, and according to the gate reports by the Guardian, uh, as Haiti's security conditions spiral further out of control, which are manifested by a rise in killings around Port-au-Prince as heavily armed gangs tried to quell a citizen-led vigilante movement, many in the country disparaged the plan as too meager and too late. And the criticism underscores deep-seated anxieties in Haiti over foreign interventions, as well as mistrust of Kenya's security forces over their record of human rights abuses and graft. There are two points there. One is that there have been previous intervention, one by the United States and Brazil. I think there was another UN sort of um, involvement and most of them uh, failed and the situation continued to spiral out of control. And the other point there is the one in relation to Kenyan forces human rights record where the local international their activities, alleged activities in, in Somalia for example and the recent um, alleged reported killings of uh, unarmed civilians in protests and also during the lockdown, uh, which uh, raise uh, human rights issues, according at least to uh, local uh, Kenyan NGOs and Human Rights Watch in particular. And there's also another concern that uh, fighting the gangs will require going to shanty towns, hillsides, terrain that you need to know very well. Um, and that money going to an outside force will be better spent on strengthening Haiti's own depleted police forces. Um, it's also notable that the Kenyan force have yet to secure the approval of the United Nations Security Council for the mission. And the size of the force, which is 1,500 compared to previous interventions by the United States, 21,000, and Brazil, 13,000. Um, and those countries are reluctant to intervene at the moment due to the wariness of a large deployment and after the US withdrew from Afghanistan. And also the general fatigue um, of many governments in the hemisphere regarding the nearly perpetual crisis in Haiti. Um, it should be added that Haiti was not only colonized but 
enslaved, uh, population was enslaved by French. And I think uh, most reports indicate that they even were paying for the, and they rebelled against uh, the, slave, the French, but they were fined to millions of, of uh, pounds or US dollars, um, which they just sort of recently finished paying off. And so there is, I think, an arguable duty of the French to be involved in, uh, if, if anything, for recreational justice, to, to sort out the crisis in Haiti, which cannot be divorced from their link of either colonization or slavery in Haiti. And so, whilst all this is going on, the, the big elephant in the room is that the French participation and involvement is missing. Um, it's also reported that the Biden administration supports the Kenyan plan and discussions about Kenya's offer to deploy a multinational police force in Haiti began about two years ago, but began in solidifying only this year, according to and reported officials' comments. And, and Kenyan troops um, have also participated in troops deployments abroad in countries like Lebanon, Sierra Leone, and South Sudan. Uh, there are around 445 personnel currently serving with the United Nations peacekeeping missions um, according to UN data. And Kenya troops serve as part of the African Union Peacekeeping Commission in Somalia and uh, a new regional force deployed in the volatile eastern region of the Democratic Republic of Congo. However, it's important to note to form that the um, Kenyan security forces have come under scrutiny for their action. Um, and, and that given their record, as I mentioned, uh, human rights activists have uh, concern and according to Human Rights Watch, it's say the Kenya police are going to export brutality to Haiti. Um, and other observers think that The reason that the other countries are asking for Kenya to take lead is because they have faith in the professional nature of the Kenyan police, according to a quoted government uh, official. Um, but it's clear that uh, the US does not want to repeat the same mistakes in previous stabilization mission in, in Haiti. Um, and trust in the United Nations plummeted in Haiti after investigations showed that poor sanitation by UN peacekeepers after the 2010 earthquake had caused one of the deadliest cholera, cholera outbreaks of modern times, killing at least 10,000 people. Um, and Gideon Jern, the executive director of the Center for Analysis and Research in Human Rights, which is an independent um, Haitian organization, uh, noted that the UN Piscuit mission, which ended in 2017, uh, sometimes spent hundreds of millions of dollars by year on its operation. And it left behind a police force that didn't even have a helicopter or good armor protection. Um, and that the size of the force will not match the, the weapons of the um, of the gangs and militias in Haiti, um, they say they have 50 caliber rifles mounted to pick up trucks, and and you you can't do it with unqualified people, and you can't fix it with rookies going in. Um, and I had observation that while those theoretically opposed to theoretical opposition to an intervention because of past mistakes made in missions. There's a belief that the United States had a responsibility to help Haiti and to allow Haitians to guide how such an integration could work. Um, uh, and they think that the U.S. should lead a peacekeeping mission 
and they don't necessarily need to send 10,000 troops, but they could send special forces who can figure out and quote unquote open up the arteries, arteries and go after uh, gangs. So the views seem to be mixed. Um, there's concern over the uh, size of the force, over the ability of, of the force, Kenyan force, whether they have the right equipment, the issues around their human rights record. And they're also concerned that it should be US-led and Haiti should be at the center. Haitian should be at the center of that development and decision making so that when they leave, they can then be able to be well equipped to take control and manage their own country and um, to maintain security and stability moving forward. And so there we shall leave it on this episode of the Diary of a Lawyer. Thank you for listening and we shall speak again. Bye.